Welcome to Trade the Trend, a weekly video about where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500. I'm going to cover the ASX 200 as well as gold and uranium in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. I'm also going to show you a comment from last week's video which I have to address, so make sure you stick around for that. As always, this is general commentary. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So here we have the S&P 500 up on the screen. And it's been a really big week, a really important week, I think, for the, uh, for, for the stock market. Because we now have this decisive break above key resistance at 4,200. So you can see this blue, blue line marking the top of a large trading range, which the market has been in for, for around 12 months. And we've now got this decisive breakout. So there's been, it's been really interesting, really interesting over the last couple of months because there's been several attempts to, for the market to sell off uh, just beneath this resistance point. And each time there's been a, a strong reaction higher. And, uh, and, and also what we've seen over the last, last, I think probably two, three weeks is this rebound off the 50-day moving average, which we also saw back in, um, back in May. And, and April, so the 50-day moving average tracking higher and the market rebounding off it. So they're positive signs. I think they're, they're positive signs that there is buying interest supporting these pullbacks and, and underpinning the market. And, uh, and we now find that the S&P 500 is trading up at a 10-month high. Now the play, if you've been watching these videos over the last, last like, six months, 12 months, whatever it may have been, the play over the last eight months, pretty much since this CPI release back in October, the play's been cautiously long. And it's been cautiously long because there's been plenty of, cr plenty of cross currents in, uh, in, in conflicting signals in this, this upward move, in this upward momentum. But I think the, um, the breakout that we have from, from last week, I think it's another green light. I think it's another green light for this for this general upward momentum that the, the market's been seen. And I think for people who have been sitting on the sidelines, people who have been watching this rally, uh, people who haven't been participating, I think this provides another opportunity to potentially get some sort of a stake in the market or potentially add to a position if uh, if the people who have been, been in the market and wanted to add but didn't want to add potentially whilst we're sitting below just below a resistance area at 4,200. So it's a really interesting week in the uh, in the stock market to see this this breakout, and it's been encouraging over the last week that the market's been able to hold on to these initial gains, and we've had this tight consolidation over the last last few few trading sessions. It's going to be interesting to see whether. Um, look, I think think it's quite possible this this market continues to consolidate this this breakout. Uh, before potentially like like breaking higher again, trending higher. But I think I think whilst whilst we have this upward momentum in place, we've got the breakout above resistance. I think the the clear play is to continue giving this momentum the uh, the benefit of the doubt, despite what we're seeing in the the um, the, the the economy, the the inflation, the rate rises, the the talk of recessions. It sounds it. It doesn't sound like a positive environment for stocks, but the market presently is telling us something different. So that's the momentum that I want to play with. I don't want to trade the headlines. I want to trade the momentum. And now I just want to jump across to the, the Dow. It's a, that's got its own really interesting story to tell. It's um, At the moment, we've got the Dow testing resistance from this downward trend line. Now, the trend line is not a perfect fit. You'll see that there's the market broke above it. Uh, in in May, there's a blip above it in December, but we've got we've got a, like a few touch points on this trend line. So look, I think it's a it's a point of reference which is worth worth keeping an eye on. And we've got a situation now. So look, the way when I when I look at this, we've got a situation where the Dow's bouncing off support. So there's a support zone around thirty two thousand thereabouts. We've had a, we've had a bounce above there. We're above the fifty and the one hundred day moving averages after after a test beneath it. And we're testing this this downward trend line. 
Well, what I'd like to see, I'd like to see this, this series of lower lows broken, and that's something we could potentially see over the next 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 week or two. It's, uh, it's also interesting when you step back and you look at this on a, on a weekly basis. So when you do this, it just helps to put it in, into some context. So we had the, the, the big bearish decline from, from December 21, but from that October low, we had a really strong rally in the Dow, and since since um, around November 22, we've just been tracking sideways. It actually looks like looks like um, looks like a bit of a flagging formation. It's not a not a textbook flagging formation because we've got a um, a break below this lower line which I've drawn. But nonetheless, you have got a, a strong rally and a and a and a compression type sideways consolidation. So the way I'd look at this chart is that I think I think we're more likely I think we're more likely to see a see a test of the um, the January 22 high than a test of the October 22 low. We're kind of midway between those two points at the moment. And uh, if I had to say either way, um, this is the one I'm I'm currently looking at. Strong rally, sideways consolidation often leads to another strong rally. So let's wait and see. We need to wait for the levels to break first. It haven't happened yet, but that seems to be the way this is um, currently currently playing. Let's um, jump over to the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100. Now this has been, this has been really leading the charge for, 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 for many, many months now. And I spoke last week about the, I thought the best case scenario was for the NASDAQ to, to pause and consolidate, let these moving averages catch up, the 50 day and the 100 day. That's kind of what we've seen over the last few days. On Wednesday, we got a bit of a bit of a downside day, and you know there was there was some you know buzz on on some of the Twitter feeds that oh this is it the market's peaked it's turning lower. It, from my perspective, this is just part of a part of a potentially a, just a pause. It, you don't you don't get bearish after one day. That's just crazy talk. At the moment, the uh, momentum is clearly to the upside, but a pause would be constructive. And and then allow the market to form form a new base before potentially then then trading higher again. Let these moving averages catch up. Now, one of the really interesting things I want to talk about is this line down here. What I've got here. This is the advanced decline line for the Nasdaq. And a big issue we've we've had. This is a big issue I've been talking about over the last last few months has been the the lack of breadth in the market. So. The, the 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 rally has been really led by by a handful of stocks, potentially around seven stocks, seven big market heavy stocks have been really driving all the gains, and uh, and when you look at the advanced decline line, while we've had the the Nasdaq 100 making higher highs, the advanced decline line has been not doing that at all. We've got like a, we've got a high point in in February, and then we've got a lower high in April. And then another lower high in May, despite these these higher highs in the Nasdaq 100. What's been what's been interesting over the last over the last um, week or two is that we now have a situation where, for the first time in in ages, we've got the the advanced decline line breaking above some previous highs. So early days, but this is this has definitely been the weak spot in the market. It's been the area of, of, of causing the greatest concern as to the sustainability of the of the rally. But this is an encouraging sign. It's a sign that maybe we're getting some more participation coming back into this um, into this this market. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about another important development on the participation side in a moment. And I'm also going to show you that comment from last week's video which I was talking about. But first of all, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment. Just, hey, thanks for the video. It just lets YouTube know that you're watching, you're engaging, and YouTube does its stuff and shows other people. Helps me heaps. Please do that. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now, let's, um, let's jump over to another really interesting uh, development this week. And this is in the Russell 2000, the, um, the, the small caps. Now, the big piece of the puzzle missing over the last few months has been the lack of participation, the lack of breadth in the market. What we've had in the last last week in this um, this Nasdaq is we've had a, had a strong upward move. This has been like an eight percent rally in in about a week. We've gone from trading below the moving averages, below the fifty and the one hundred day moving averages, where it's been stuck beneath since um, since early March, 
and we're now back above the moving averages. The moving averages are saying to turn higher. We're still within a we're still within a broad range, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is still a big range bound market, but we do have the potential of a of a of a rounding base over the last few months, and and this could be the start of of a of a larger basing pattern. This could potentially be a, like a larger rounding base, which is which um, which has been been tracing out over over what where's that goes back to um to may 22 so like over the last more than what 14 or so months now uh maybe it's just maybe this is this is now starting to to gain some traction on the upside so it's one of the things we want to watch but it is a sign of of breadth spreading out from beyond the s and uh, beyond the the nasdaq 100 and uh, we want to see, like, healthy bull markets are all about broad participation. So we want to see that strength in the NASDAQ 100 spreading out across the, the market generally. Now, let me show you this, this comment from last week. This is, um, these are the comments from last week's um, S&P 500 video. And uh, Tom, Tom left me a comment. He said, market falls, you're scared and cautious. It rises, you're scared and cautious. Mate, how are you going to trade? And he goes on to say that, um, look, just invest, leave it in there, ride the bull trend, don't overanalyze, don't think too much, no one's smarter than the market, follow the upward momentum, make money, simple. Look, there's, there's, some, there's some sensible comments there. You know, I think it's sensible. Don't overanalyze, don't overthink. Um, you know, don't think you're smarter than the market. Follow upward momentum. I like all that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but this, this talk about being scared and cautious, well, I don't know where scared comes from. I don't think anyone in the market is you know, a, a type of a scared personality. You'd never be able to sleep at night. But cautious, look, I've got to tell you, I've got to disagree with Tom on, you know, why am I cautious when the market on an up day and a down day? In the last eight months, it's been cautiously long. That's what I've consistently said. And no apologies for saying cautious because that's the way I've seen this market. And my response to Tom was, you know, look, there's a time to push hard. There's a time to sit it out. There's a time to be cautious. And you see, like, upward momentum is great. We want to trade that upward momentum. And in hindsight, we should have gone all in long at the, at the October low. But the thing is, we don't trade in hindsight. We trade in real time. And you've got to respect risk. People who don't respect risk, uh, really, they're on a they're on a they're on a ticking ticking time bomb to to leaving the market. And uh, I think there are time. The reason we've been cautious in the last eight months, at least the reason I've been cautious, is there've been so many conflicting signal signals. We've had lack of breadth. There's there's been cross currents. It it hasn't been a clear cut bullish trend. But there's been good reason to participate. And uh, reminds me of a great, great quote from one of my, my trading, um, one, of, one, of the, one of the traders I learned so much from early in my career, a guy called Ed Sakota, one of the pioneers of, of systematic trend following. And Ed said, there are, there are old traders and there are bold traders, but there are no old, bold traders. So if you, you, know, if you want bold all or nothing plays, I'm the wrong person for you. I'm here to help you win. And the other thing to remember is, though, I'm also here to help you stay in the game when you don't win. So that's why you're going to hear me talk about things like things like you know, being cautious, not, not taking uh, unnecessary risk, looking for asymmetric risk-reward situations where you can make more than you can potentially lose you know, first rule of trading, stay in the game. And if you're going to be taking these huge swings and, and, and throwing cautions of the wind, you ain't going to stay in the game. So look, hopefully that's been interesting. Thanks, Tom, for your comments last week. It's a really interesting talking point. And uh, yeah, look, forward to coming back, talking to you next week. Till then, bye for now.